like we're making a difference in, in people's lives by better understanding. new science, I think it can hopefully change the world. It's cures for different types of cancers. Understanding of the process of protein folding. That's chemistry. That's a chemical reaction. I can help show. My name is Peter Wallenis. I'm a professor at Rice University. ACS Award in Theoretical Chemistry uh, recognizes my work uh, in protein folding. Proteins are polymers uh, that are uh, chain molecules made up of amino acids. Uh, usually, and the sequence of those amino acids uh, is determined by the DNA sequence that encodes the protein. So the surprising thing is that protein molecules, when they're made, are very disordered objects. They look like pieces of spaghetti just tumbling around in many different shapes. But most of the time when they function, they've settled down to one particular arrangement of spaghetti. It's somehow like uh, you just made spaghetti and it arranged itself in some very special curly Q shape just to look beautiful on your plate. And that's what's involved in protein folding. The protein molecule, although it's made of many parts, organizes itself in a very special way so that it can carry out its functions. In some cases, a few proteins, uh, or specific kinds of proteins, fail to fold properly. And so uh, diseases like Alzheimer's disease and several other diseases come from the improper folding of protein molecules. One of the uh, sort of philosophical problems of uh, protein folding was that there were so many possible shapes of protein molecules, it seemed like a protein molecule would have to try all of these out before it could find the right one. And this led to something called the Leventhal paradox and it would have said that you could not fold uh, any protein in a time less than the age of the universe. So this question of how the molecule finds its specific shape, while it's still moving all the time, is, is the, the puzzle involved in protein folding. And the way it does that, it turns out, is to have every part of it uh, be more consistent in the final structure than it would normally be in a random uh, way of bringing the molecule together. So although the molecule tries to make incorrect uh, structures, when it makes a correct structure, it stays in it just a bit longer. That makes it easier for another part of the molecule to stay in its correct structure a bit longer still. And in this way, you get a sort of snowballing effect that finally uh, leads you to the folded structure. So the main idea in understanding this was that you didn't just have to understand the individual forces on each part of the protein molecule, but you had to understand how they work together, how they give a energy landscape that looks like a funnel that guides uh, the motion of the protein to its most stable state. So the funnel suggests this notion that there are many degrees of freedom and many ways that a protein can find its way down to its most stable state. In the functioning of protein molecules, they actually unfold and refold, and it's as if your car did its business by breaking itself apart and reassembling itself uh, as it uh, uh, continued to roll down the, uh, down the road. And I think this conception of how proteins work as assembling and disassembling machines is, I think, something that was quite different from what I thought when I got started. The the actual work uh, involves sort of getting those word ideas that I just described and turning them into uh, practical uh, uh, and usable equations. And that made it possible to make predictions of laboratory experiments that uh, tell you how fast proteins fold. So it becomes easier to look at proteins and decide what their uh, structure might be on the basis of their sequence. One of the other interesting things it allows you to do is to identify which parts of a protein are actually going to remain mobile. And uh, for example, where there's a part of a protein there where there are inconsistent signals from the sequence. This turns out to play a role in telling whether a molecule will be in one state or another. And, and this has been used uh, to uh, identify key mutations in proteins that change them from being useful regulating molecules to molecules that cause cancer. We can't study the proteins of every individual mutation of every person who has cancer, so instead we have to somehow understand what the mutations do to change the way molecules function and move. 
This ability to understand where single mutations change a protein so that it functions improperly means that one can help in, in carrying out studies of personalized medicine, that individual tumors have specific mutations in them, and one needs to sort of understand why the mutation in this particular person uh, is causing uh, that particular uh, uh, improperly functioning protein. I certainly hope that uh, uh, this work will actually have uh, this sort of uh, specific use uh, in, the, in the future, helping uh, 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 personalized medicine be, be, be realized.